Talk Nerd Me presents video podcast number 89. Comic book video podcast. And don't you forget it, Ambassador. Oh, I don't forget it, because comics are awesome. And, uh, I'm Pablo Gunner. I am the Ambassador. Ambassador j to be exact. Uh, because I didn't know this, but Tony B is actually part of the Ambassador program as well. So now we have to call him Ambassador Tony B when we have him on the podcast. Okay. Fellow so, Ambassador. Yeah, so there you go. Anyways, um, we talk about comics. This is the Comic Book Video Podcast. Now, on this Comic Book Video Podcast that we're doing, we're just going to cover our best of stuff, you know? And we're not going to cover, like, ten different best of things, okay? We're going to cover just one for each of us. Yeah. We're going to cover our cover of the week, our panel of the week, our spread of the week, and... And the best book of the week, our back and bag. Back and bag of the week. That's our that's our own signature thing, okay? So don't rip it off, okay? Don't rip it off, all right? Back and bag, because it's so good, it deserves to be in that back and bagging that we love so much, okay? And usually, the cover week ends up getting back and bag, too, just yeah. because you love the cover. Right, or just the best books but of course the one it's like one of those things where it's like if, if you i have only, one if back you only, and bag left what am i going to use it for there you go there you go and that's what the back and bag is all about people so let's go ahead and jump into this right away you know what ambassador i'm going to take over and i'm going to show these people my panel of the week uh hopefully you can see it here and it is uh in batman 22 Batman Year Zero. Batman Year Zero. Uh, Greg Capullo drawing that right there. And what it is, it's a panel over there on uh, the left where it's Alfred slapping Bruce Wayne. Which we talked about this in, in our audio podcast. Um, it, it's a lot of what happened around it where Bruce Wayne says, well, what's your deal? What's your problem? And he goes, this is what my problem is. And he goes, F you. Who the hell are you? And he goes, oh, yeah? And he slaps the hell out of him. And I go, that's right. Because you, you said, now you, know where, now you know where Bruce learned it from. Yeah. From him slapping dick all those times, right? <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> you learned it from like, Alfred. See? Alfred taught me how to slap dick. So, uh, as a young man, you know, since he, since he was a young man. So, you know, like I said, for me, the brevity of the situation is what made it my panel of the week, as well as it, it looks good, too, you know? Yeah. It's a lot of what happened around it is what made it my panel. All right? What's your panel? My panel of the week is uh, this one right here with uh, Superman. He's uh, freezing uh, the water around him so he can uh, stop the tallest building in the world in Dubai from falling. Yeah, that that was really cool. You don't see the ice breath power used that much. You don't see it utilized that much. And it's cool to see him take all his powers into account, and then you see him use him. Yeah, I mean, yeah you this one, he goes through the process. Well, if I do this, well, no. That's going to hurt a lot of people if I do that. Mm. If I do that, no. I'm, I'm going to blow glass in people's face. I don't think they want that. And then he finally gets to the right <laughs> one. It's so dumb. <laughs> but it's a great panel because you see Superman like flying by and it shows the streaks from his cape. But you can also tell it's him. Like you can yeah. see his face. You can see his nice voluminous hair. You know. And the other cool thing is like, and just the, the city. coloring itself changes too. So you know that's ice right there. That's not water. Right. It looks cool. Yeah. You can tell. You can tell the difference. It's, it's yeah. pretty cool. It's really awesome. All right, uh, next we're, I'm going to show you my spread of the week, which is in Justice League number 22. It's epic. It's a two-page spread. Steve Trevor is starting to become one of my favorite char fa favorite unpowered characters because uh, he has no powers. He has no powers, yet he is there at the front leading the charge against these powered heroes, and he has the cones, the cajones to do that. Now, I understand Batman and Batman... It doesn't have any powers too, but Batman, he is a cheapo, um, and he has all these gadgets, and he has, you know, all these stupid and things to, to be a ripoff. Yeah, he has all this strength, which Trevor, he's a soldier. He's, uh, it kind of reminds me of Captain America without the serum, you know? Yeah. So it, that's why I like him so much, but the spread is just awesome, because, like, you can feel the tension in that, in that spread, and it's awesome, because it's a two-page spread, just 
so awesome. Yeah, you see that tension, but my spread is from the same book, but the tension being let out. Yeah, it is. It, it, <laughs> which we didn't do that on purpose. We did not do that on purpose. It just happened that way, um, you know. But uh, it's I cool. did purposely wear my Justice League yeah. shirt this week, though. I did. No, no planning. I wore Punisher, even though it glows DC in the dark. was it yeah, glows it glows in the dark. But DC was a strong. Which I'll be honest, that's not very smart to be wearing a Punisher shirt in the dark. You don't want to see him coming. No, um, you really don't. Yeah. So I wouldn't su Punisher. I wouldn't suggest you wear that shirt of yours. Yeah. You know, and don't wear the red one either while you're at it. Well, now when the ambassador has his awesome, you know, blacklight parties, he can throw on the Punisher shirt, and exactly. they know who it is. So, you know, that's what it's useful for. But anyways, uh, let's move on to cover of the week. My cover is uh, Ultimate Comics: The Ultimates. I don't know what number, but it just looks crazy. I didn't number know who that 27. part. Number twenty-seven. Number twenty-seven, and uh, and so it just looks crazy because. I didn't know who that guy on the front was, but it's Reed Richards, and he's doing brain surgery on Tony Stark. And it looks like real people. Does it yeah. not look like real people? But it is it is somebody's legitimate art. I don't even know who it, whose it is. I mean, that's that's how much of a you know slacker I am. I don't even know who it is. It's Michael Car Comark. That's who it is. He, he's awesome at doing it. I've never seen him do anything else, but he's awesome at doing covers. Yeah. And of course, my cover of the week is Superman Unchained number two. It's just sweet. Like I didn't really know what he was doing then, but it looked like he was kind of holding the American flag and just holding something big up. I think it was like a tank or tank something, or, something. or maybe something like that. Or it could have been that machine he fought. Yeah, but it it was sweet regardless, and it really like. When I bought the comics, I saw this, it was like, I need to read this. That's what this cover made me do. Because it was just so good, and then it's cool to see the coloring on it as well. Yeah, it was awesome. It, and it's, I love the glossy cover. Yeah. Texture of the week, can we say that too? Yeah, texture of the week. Can we say texture week. of the week? It's just nice, smooth, glossy yeah. cover. nice texture, you see it reflecting right there. Yeah, reflection, texture of the week. We just made that up. Actually, we... We made it up a while ago. Yeah. On an older podcast. Uh, but but we brought it back. Yeah. We brought it back just for this special time, special edition. I don't know. Or whenever Superman Unchained comes out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, second, we have the Superman uh, Unchained uh, number two. That is my back and bag of the week. Uh, we already talked about this um, in our other podcast, but I'm going to chat about it again some more. One thing that I failed to mention... In, in the other podcast is that robot that attacked him, it knocked him on his freaking hiney. It did. And it seemed like it was a legitimate challenge for him. And to see that is really cool. I, I, li I hate it when they overpower Superman. You know, in All-Star Superman, it made sense with, that he was overpowered because he had absorbed too much sun. So he was overpowered, you know? So it made sense in that story. Now, in yeah. other stories... It seems like he's the same level of power, but he's not over-consumed. He hasn't over-consumed the sun. Yeah. It's like if he just got from like a trip from the sun and he's super-powered, okay, I get that. I get that. But if he's like that all the time, then he's overpowered. This feels like a good level of power, especially because, I don't know, the one thing, though, I, I have to say I dislike is it seems like recently they've been making Superman bleed a lot. Yeah. And, and that really bugs me because I'm like, that's a lot of DNA he's dropping, and they're just going to be making, like, tons of clones and tons of, you know, bad versions of him if, if unless he, like, sears his own blood before he leaves the scene, you know? Which he could do. He could do. I don't yeah. doubt that he would do that, you know? So, that's a possibility. But it's just cool to see that level of difficulty that he has in this. Like, he's generally, like, it was so intense, too. Like, yeah. that I'm moment from the get-go, it was so intense, you know, that, that we see him with that situation. Just like we talked about in, in the other one is the relationship that he has with Bruce Wayne, too. Like, they know each other's identities, and, you know, they can he's, have talks. They can have talks about being themselves. He's one of the few outside of the Bat family that can just walk right into the Bat cave. Yeah, and it's somebody he can confide in, too. Yeah. I feel like there's not many of those people besides, like, his mom, you know, that he can really do that. 
you know, but I feel like somebody that really understands how he feels and what he's going through, especially being like another fellow uh, superhero, knows a lot about it, even though he doesn't know what it's like to have powers. He yeah. understands just, he understands the whole power and responsibility thing, you know? He does, and it's interesting. I like how they both were grew up differently and have different views, but both but they want, want the same, the same thing. Yes, they want the same thing, and Schneider gets that too. He it's he gets each character differently, you know, and, and that's something that's. I mean, it's crazy. Schneider gets it, you know. Schneider gets it, right? Yeah, and that's why his Superman isn't dark because he's like, no, this is Superman. Yeah, he needs to be. The way he is and not the way I usually write. And I love the tussled hair look, you know. It's like, he's going to get messed up, people. His hair's not always going to be the comb over with the curl. I'm sorry if he's in water, if he's going to get robots that are shooting freaking laser beams at his head. You know, if he has, you know, uh, General Lane shooting black matter, you know, bullets at him. He's going to, he, he's going to mess him up, you know. But, of course, his suit doesn't look like the constantly messed up suit of uh, Kamun Kali with, um, with Spider-Man, with Spider -Man, where it's like a tuft of hair poking up on one side and then, you know, this messed up over here. And it's, it's never consistent either, or it's rarely consistent. But, it, like I said, that General Lane edge, I feel like that's something that's never in any of the other comics uh, when it comes to Superman. I've, I feel like I've never seen I've never seen it, personally, at least in any of the big, of all the Super man graphic novels that i've read he's never been an element and i'm glad he is in this even if this is the only superman story we've ever read um i think he's gonna be a villain in this and he's gonna be a he's gonna be tough you know as well as this other character this you know other player that's showing up i don't know who the hell it is but i'm i'm pretty freaked out yeah and then of course we have classic luther at the end that that you know you know tip of the cap right there you know we're uh you know what I mean? Like, it's just it's cherry sweet. on top type yeah. of thing, you know? He just It's awesome how and he's bringing it all together at once. Yeah, he didn't go into a big amount of detail with Luther. It's like, oh, this is Luther being Luther. That's all you need to know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's why it's my backing bag. What's yours, Ambassador? Mine is the Ultimates. Number oh, hey! 27, your that was cover. my That was my cover of the week. Look at that. Like I said, another thing, we didn't plan that. We don't plan no, any of this out, really. We don't. It's just this one had some pretty crazy stuff, including the brain surgery, which you find out in the book why he's doing the brain surgery, and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, that was my dog, by the way. And I really like how there's, even though this book was mostly focused on the villains, it still mentioned... The whole Infinity Gems thing going on. Oh, yeah. And, and pretty much it, it explains why Tony Stark had that tumor to begin with and what the deal was with it. And it makes sense in a very crazy, strange way. It does. It's like it was meant to be. It's like someone placed it there. It's also It kind of reminds me of what they did with the new Iron Man origin story where it's like, they may have messed with it, but... Man, did it make sense. Yeah. You know, where it's like, he's a genius. Why? Probably because he has the mind gem in his head. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, in little did you know, it was a tumor. You didn't know that. Spoiler alert! Sorry, I spoiled it for you, folks. Yeah, I was trying to keep him from doing that. <sighs> I'm sorry. Sometimes it just spills out. Especially when it's gets that spoiled. big of a deal. But, you know, it's... Like you said, it's mostly surrounding around the villains. There's a lot of crazy stuff. Like, the villains are messing up the heroes in this. Like, yeah. they're just jacking them up left and right. Kang shows up and is mocking Hawkeye and is mocking um, Steve Rogers. You know, uh, Reed Richards is mocking um, Stark the whole damn time. Yeah. And then he's sending, like, Quicksilver out to go whoop on, uh, on half of the Fantastic Four, right? Yeah. I'm wondering, what, where's, where's Johnny Storm? Where's, where's Johnny, where's, where's Johnny? I want to, what's, I've never seen him. What's, where's Johnny? Did he, did he die? What Maybe happened to Richards him? killed him. I don't know. Yeah. But it's weird too that they kind of bring the negative zone into this like so soon. It's like, that's a new thing. Can you guys use something that's old? Like Kang's an old character and it's nice that you're using this old character. Can you stick with using like old stories too? That's always been my problem with, with Marvel. But guess what? 
they're doing some ballsy stuff in this, like possibly killing off all these characters. And the thing is, I have no doubt in my mind that they'll actually follow through with it because it's the Marvel Universe. And not only that, I'm not worried that they're going to bring these characters back because they've already killed characters and left them dead. And mind you, yeah. I know it's only been like a year or two, you know, but I feel like it would be stupid of them to bring back one of their characters that they've killed off. But even if they do it, I feel like they can put other characters in their places that they haven't introduced into the Ultimate Universe yet that you can just fill that void with and be like, that's okay. We have yeah. other people to work with, so it's it doesn't matter. And and if we ever at one time want to bring them back and come up with some awesome story to do it, then we will. But we right. want it to make they want we want. It's awesome that they're like it's gonna you you're gonna feel the weight of these deaths. That's what how what that's what I'm getting from it. And so I, there's that was my back and back runner up. Yeah, it's just there's so much going on and it's so intense and it's nothing you really see very much mainstream. Yeah, it's really ballsy. It's really ballsy. Yeah. So, all right, folks. Well, uh, thank you for listening. Um, make sure you check out our social media stuff, you know, where you can contact us and all that stuff because we want you to contact us. We want you to talk yeah. crap about us. Like, you know, I, I, I hate those shirts that say, I heart haters. In fact, I'd love to go up to those people and be like, hey, guess what? Your hat, it's stupid, and I hate it. And they're like, eh, eh, eh very funny but it's like well isn't that why you're wearing it though you you like it so why aren't yeah. you a little why aren't you happier but anyways the point is is that bring it on people bring it on we love constructive cr criticism because as screwed up as the comments are there has to be some shred of uh some shred of um truth to it where we can make ourselves better yeah. and stronger and if we can't well then that probably just means that uh your comment is stupid and sucked and didn't make any sense. So you need to be clear with your insults. They better be good insults. We like intelligent insults. Nerds should not be stupid. We have good vocabularies, and we shall use those vocabulary vocabularies to our fullest extent. So do that, and make sure that you keep those eyes hungry for comics. <laughs>